What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how you can use any RBC voice model to create text to speech. Why is this so special and why does it deserve a separate video? Well, essentially, you can train voice models on anyone and you're able to transfer your voice or someone else's into another's. I've previously covered videos on not only using your own voice, but also creating those AI song covers where you replace someone singing in a song, all the way to changing your voice live on Discord, etc. You'll find links to these in the description down below. This video is going to cover creating text to speech in someone's voice using one of these RVC voice models. If you followed either of the previous two videos, you probably already have some voice models, but we'll go through everything in this video here just to keep you all up to speed. First of all, let's download the text to speech voice model program. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Aplio RVC Fork. This allows you to do a whole bunch of things including, most importantly, text-to-speech. I haven't seen many bits of software offering this, other than maybe like Eleven Labs, where you type in some text and it spits out someone speaking in someone else's voice, but this is run completely on your own system for free. All we need to do is look on the right side for releases and just below it you'll see an installer. Simply click this to get to the latest version. Then we'll be downloading the windows.bat file here. Obviously, if you're on Linux, you'll be downloading that instead. Then when it's done, instead of just opening it, we're going to be moving it to a folder where we'll install our program. So I'll place it on my desktop and call it maybe AI TTS. You can call it whatever you want. I'll move the bat file into here and all we need to do is run this. If you'd like, you can can right click and choose edit or open in notepad to see exactly what this bit of code does. If you're prompted about Windows security, simply click run anyway. Much like the rest of this project, it's all open source, so you can see exactly what this installer file does, etc. assuming you're able to understand what's going on here. To install this program, simply run this file and a window will open up where the installation will begin. It'll all be downloaded to this folder here. The first question is, what kind of graphics card do you have? I'll be choosing the top one as it's probably the best for most users. These other two are only if you really know what you're doing. So I'll enter one and press enter. Now a rather large download will begin and it'll take some time to complete. I'll skip forward until this is done. There we go, the download is done and the window closes. Now we have a folder in here where the actual program is installed. You can move this folder to a different place, but for now I'll just be leaving it here. Opening this, inside we'll find a whole bunch of files and what we're looking for is goapplio.bat. Simply run this and you'll be able to launch the software. The first time you fire it up, you'll be asked a question. More than likely, it'll be number one if you're using NVIDIA, two for Intel and three for AMD. That's it. I'll enter one and press enter. Now, a few more downloads will be done, including a few models to actually get the text to speech to work and things like that. And shortly after, the program itself will start up. Just a quick note, if you get any errors about Python or something like that, in the GitHub page, you can scroll down to the installation section and read some more info about fixing possible issues. More than likely, you won't need to do anything, but if you need to download Python, you'll find a link for it in the description down below as well. Shortly after, a few gigs of downloading models, the program itself will open up in your browser just like this. This model looks very similar to the previous video that I did on the original voice to voice RBC program. You'll find this link down below. Essentially, we can use the first tab to convert one voice to another, the second tab to train our own model, the third tab, UVR5, separates voices from music, etc. Then TTS is the tab that we're going to be focusing on in this video. You also have the resources to download models and import them, which we'll get to in a moment, the extra tab to merge audios, etc and settings to change the theme of the program. But once again, TTS is where we'll be spending most of our time here. First of all, we'll need to select a voice model for which I currently don't have any. Now let's go ahead and download some. In the description down below, you'll find a link to voice-models.com, but there's quite a few places that you can get voice models from. This is just one of them. All you'll do is you'll search for someone or something. So for example, I don't know, let's go for Obama, and it'll be looking for RVC models that usually have RVC written somewhere in them or in the download. This one looks about right, so I'll click the link to download it or be taken to a page where I can download it. Then after the round about 300 meg download is complete, we can open up the zip and we'll need to extract these to somewhere temporary. 
So for example, just extracting them to my downloads folder here as such, we can delete the zip. And with these two files here, let's actually import them. So back to the web UI, head to the resources tab at the very top and where it says drag your path file here, simply drag your path file as such into here and on the right side, your index file. So index I'll drag here, just like that. As soon as the uploading vanishes, it's now been copied into the actual program itself. And we can delete these temporary files here as well on top of the zip. Otherwise you'll have multiple copies of the same thing everywhere. Heading back to the DTS tab, you should see in RVC models and clicking refresh, you should see in the RVC models, we now have someone here and in the index file, we can select the appropriate one here. I probably should have renamed this to be something like Obama to match the path file, just so we know which index file is which. After selecting both of these, we'll need to head across to the left side where it says TTS model and choose a voice type. If we expand this, you'll see tons of different languages followed by names. So for example, AF is offered Cons, ZA stands for South Africa, followed by a name or a style and a gender. If we scroll all the way down or simply type in EN hyphen, we'll find all of the English accents. So it'll filter it. We have Australian, South African, British, etc. Some of these sound much better than other ones. All you're going to do is look for something that matches the gender of the person you're trying to recreate. So for example, let's go for maybe, I don't know, Eric Male. Then we'll type something in here, such as this. Then we'll click convert at the very bottom here. This will then convert our text into a text to speech audio file. And shortly after, run it through the audio model we have on the far right and pump something out at the end. We'll have an audio TTS version that you can listen to and hear how the raw, raw, unprocessed file sounds. Hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Doesn't sound all that good, but the processed file on the far right should sound a bit better. Hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Much better. If you'd like to save it, click the three dots and choose download. That's it. If we have a look at TTS method, we can expand this and choose Google TTS. If you'd like to use Google's text-to-speech engine to create maybe a more realistic sounding voice. So if we try convert this, we should hopefully get something realistic sounding back. Hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Okay, yeah, well, uh, definitely not, but let's see how it came out on the other side. Hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. And now you can see why it's important to match or at least closely match the gender of your text to speech and the voice type of your model. As for changing the gender or how the Google TTS sounds, you can't do that. And of course it's online. Edge TTS, however, should be run off of your system. So EN, let's go for US this time and go for maybe Roger. If we try convert once more, we should get a different result. And this is what it sounds like. Hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Then, Hello, I am Obama, and I am enjoying a hot dog. Obviously, it could be improved with putting on an accent or a different spacing between words, etc. You could edit this to sound a bit better, but obviously the most realistic way of getting a good sounding result is to record yourself saying something and run it through on the model inference tab over here. So for example, we can refresh here, choose the voice and the index file, then using the original text to speech, let's say, let's drag it into here to select it. We can change the pitch and convert should change our text to speech audio into whatever model we have selected here. So playing this. Hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Obviously it sounds very similar to the text to speech tab as we used a text to speech sample. However, we can instead record from a microphone. So I'll exit this out and record from a microphone. So, oh, hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Doing a terrible accent, let's convert it and. Oh, hello, I am Obama and I am enjoying a hot dog. Obviously uh, marginally better, but you get the point. It's a great little fun tool to play around with and you can import practically as many text-to-speech models as you want. To import more, just head to the resources tab, X out of both of these here and drag in a new path file and index file, select them on the text-to-speech tab and just like that, things are working as you'd hope. That's really it. It's a simple piece of software that just works, uses your own local resources and is completely 100% free, assuming you have the computer hardware to run it. You can run this on much lower end systems without such powerful graphics cards to speed up your process, but 
it is going to be a little bit slower in that case. We can close out of this command prompt window to exit out of the program. And as soon as we've done that, you'll notice that some resources are freed up on your system. And in order to launch it again, simply head back to the folder Applio RVC fork, followed by goapplio.bat. That's it. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's a really fun tool to mess around with. And that's really it. So thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.